All right, welcome to lesson 2.7, finding square roots and comparing real numbers. All right, we are going to start with a couple um, vocabulary words. So the first things first is uh, the key concept of the video. If d squared equals a, then b is a square root of a, okay? And I'll get more into what that means as we go forward. But we want to know the different parts of a square root, okay? So square root looks like this. It usually has a variable or a number underneath what's called the radical symbol, okay? The radical symbol, symbol is this weird kind of checkmark looking symbol, okay? The number or variable underneath is called the radicand. All right, so next um, we need to talk about what a perfect square is. A perfect square is an integer. It's the square of an integer, okay? So, for example, um, here is a chart of all the different perfect squares. It's these colored, these kind of tanny, orange colored ones here. So, the perfect square, so for example, the square root of 4 is a perfect square because 2 times 2 equals 4. So the square root of 4 would equal 2. The square root of, let's say, 64. If I look 64, the square root of 64, we know that 8 times 8 equals 64, okay? So we always need to know that the square root and squaring something are opposites. So if I were to say 11 squared equals 11 times 11, which equals 121, which on the flip side could mean that the... Ooh, a really bad radical, radical sign. Um, the square root of 121 equals 11. So they're opposites of each other. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So, um, first example, the square root of 36. So if you remember, look, oh, it's a perfect square. So the square root of 36 is 6. Now, if you notice, I have this kind of fancy-looking symbol in front of it. It just means positive or negative. So positive square root of 36 is positive 6, okay? Um, and if we had the, uh, or it could also be negative 6, because negative 6 times negative 6 also equals positive 36. So that's why they include the plus or minus sign. All right. Next one, the square root of 49. Well, I know that um, 49 is actually a perfect square because 7 times 7 equals 49. All right. Now, if you look at this last one, it has a negative sign in front of my radical. Okay. That means that whatever my square root of 4 is, I'm going to put a negative sign out front. Okay, so the square root of 4 is 2 because I have that negative sign out front. My answer is negative 2. Um, something to note that is very important. You cannot have a negative sign underneath a radical. Okay, this does not work. If you were to try to type it in a new calculator, it would say, um, like it would give you an error sign. It does not work because the number under the radical sign needs to be multiplied. Um, ha it needs to have two numbers that are the same to equal itself, and no two numbers that are the same are going to ever equal a negative number because you always have to have a positive number and a negative number to be multiplied together. Okay? Let's look at another example. We have the top of a folding table is a square whose area is 945 square inches. Approximate the side length of the tabletop to the nearest inch. Okay, so if we think about it, we have to find the side length. 
So we've got a, a square table. I know it doesn't look square, but just go with it. Okay. We have some unknown side, and that's all four. So I know that the area of a square is just doing a side times a side, or in this case, side squared. So th they came up with an equation that says S squared equals 945. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact opposite. We are going to, we have S squared equals 945. And the opposite, the inverse operation of squaring something is to do the square root of it. So I'm going to say, I'm not going to do that. So the square root of 945 will get me my side length. All right, so what that means is I'm going to look at this table here and I'm going to determine if 945 is a perfect square. Okay, in this case, if you see, it's not a perfect square because the square root of 30, or 30 squared, I'm sorry, is 900. 31 squared is 961. So it's somewhere in here. Okay, so as it said in the original question, it says approximate. So I'm going to say it's a about, it's somewhere between 30 and 31, okay? Um, because it is closer to 31 than it is to 30, because 945 is closer to 961 than it is to 900, I am going to say that my answer is that the side length of the tabletop is about 31 inches, okay? So if you noticed how we went from, um, we determined that 945 was not a perfect square, okay? We didn't try and figure out a decimal, okay? We tried to figure out what two whole numbers it was between and which one was closer, and that's why our answer is also about 31, okay? All right, let's look at another example. It says approximate the square root to the nearest integer. So we have the square root of 32. And I know that the square root of 32 is not a perfect square because I can think, you know, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, so on and so forth. 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 6 is 36. So that's where this is coming from. I know that it's somewhere in between 5 and 6. It's going to be anywhere in between that. Now, in this case, 32 is closer to 36. Um, so that means that my answer is going to be about... Um, six, because if you see how they kind of wrote it up here, they wrote it's somewhere between 25 and 36, somewhere between five and six, but because the square root of 36, 32 is closer to six, my answer, oops, sorry, my answer is going to be six. Okay. All right. So, the last part of our um, video is comparing real numbers. And this is a bit of a review, but I just wanted to go over what an irrational number is. So, a irrational number is um, explained as this. The square root of a whole number is an example of um, an irrational number. An irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a quotient of two integers. The decimal form of an irrational number neither terminates nor repeats. So, for example, pi, it's a decimal that neither terminates, we don't have an end, and it does not repeat. Okay? Same as if you were to type in the square root of 20 in the calculator, you would see that um, it just it's a decimal that goes on and on and on forever, and there's no uh, pattern. 
same or same with if I were to do the square root of three divided by two, same thing. No pattern goes on and on forever. So that's why it's called an irrational number. All right, so um, the real numbers, when we're talking about real numbers, it's the set of all the rational numbers and all the irrational numbers. So we learned in an earlier video all about the rational numbers. We've got rational numbers, integers, whole numbers. But then we also have irrational numbers. Now, if you notice, there is a square root in here as a rational number. The reason for that, if I were to look at the square root of 16, and I were to separate this to the square root of 16 over the square root of 9, um, I know that the square root of 16 is 4. I'm going to write it up here. And the square root of 9 is 3. And 4 over 3 is a um, number that, if I were to divide it, does have a pattern as a fraction or as a decimal. So that's why it's considered a rational number. Whereas if you were to look at the square root of 2 fifths, there's no um, pattern and it does not terminate. Okay? So. It, in your work, it might ask you to classify whether or not a number is an, um, a real number, a rational number, an irrational number, an integer, or a whole number. So the first thing we have is the square root of 24. Then we have the square root of um, 100. And then we have the negative square root of 81. So let's solve these out. So I am going to look at the... Um, square root of 24 first. Um, is it a real number? Yes. Is it a rational number? If you were to type in the square root of 24, you would see that it is a decimal that has no end and does not repeat. So it is not a rational number. So then it's considered an irrational number. Since it's an irrational number, it's not an integer or a whole number. Okay. Now if I look at the square root of 100, I know that the square root of 100 is a real number. The square root of 100 is actually 10, so it's also a rational number. It's an integer, and it's a whole number. It's not an irrational number. Okay. Same thing with the square root of 81. I know that the square root of 81 is 9, so it's a real number. It's a rational number. It is not an irrational number. It's an integer, and it's a whole number. All right. The last example I have for you um, is ordering real numbers. So we need to order these from least to greatest. So I might need to use my calculator to type it in. Notice I have some negative numbers and some positive numbers. Okay. Um, you can graph them on a number line first if you would like. It also helps to turn them all into one type of number. So in this case, I would say the easiest would be to turn um, like four-thirds into a decimal, turn the negative square root of five into a decimal, turn the square root of 13 into a decimal, so on and so forth. And then we could um, put them into on a number line if we wanted to to determine what the order is. Okay. Um, my suggestion to you would be to look at your calculator, type in this information to see how it works out. Okay. It shows a little bit right here where negative square root of 5 is negative 2.24 or negative 2 and 24 uh, hundredths. So that would be less negative than negative 2 and a half. All right. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 13 is 3 and 61 hundredths, or 3.61. So that is why it is um, a little bit bigger than the square root of 9. And then 4 thirds is the same as 1 and 1 third. So it's 1.3, repeating. So that's why it's here. Okay? All right, come into class with any questions. Otherwise, that's all I have for you. Thanks.